Tune in every Monday at 1.30 p.m. for A Woman's Word. A Woman's Word. Hosted by Minister Wendy H. Lewis. Topics will include the rights of men and women, gender-based violence, entrepreneurship, financial literacy, personal development, and much more. A Woman's Word. Hosted by Minister Wendy H. Lewis. Every Monday at 1.30 p.m. right here on I-95.5 FM. A Woman's this program is sponsored by the Office of the Prime Minister, Gender and Child Affairs Division, the Trinidad and Tobago Corporate Training Academy, Little Africa, and Dab Coins, digital currency of the future. Okay, so a great afternoon to all of our listeners. Thank you once again for staying with us. It's now 28 minutes, climb up to the top. Um, in studio with Miss Wendy H. Lewis. Well, it's an all new program. It's called A Woman's Worth. Okay, so I'm here with Miss Wendy H. Lewis. She's an ordained minister at Warriors Assembly Growing Church, Breakthrough Ministries International under Apostle slash Bishop and Prophet Dr. Dexter James, an author, certified protocol officer, corporate trainer, mentor, motivational speaker, radio and television host, communications and marketing strategist. Minister Wendy H. Lewis also owns and manages the Trinidad and Tobago Corporate Training Academy, formerly the Trinidad and Tobago School of Protocol, and is the chair and direct manager of Caribbean Women Honors and Empowerment, Trinidad and Tobago chapter. Minister Wendy is a skilled and thorough researcher Articulate communicator, all rounded achiever with strong business acumen, focused, resourceful, multitasker, who is spiritually grounded with a high motivation to succeed. Joining the I 95 family with her program, A Woman's Worth, let's welcome Minister Wendy H. Lewis. Minister Wendy, Welcome. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Thank you to all the viewers who are logged on. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank God for prophecy being fulfilled, mm -hmm. that I am here to fulfill purpose. I want to thank my bishop. I want to thank I-95 for having me. You're welcome. My sponsors, Office of the PM, Gender and Child Affairs Division, the Trinidad and Tobago Corporate Training Academy, Little Africa, Dark Coins, and Designs to Life. So, here we are at A Woman's Worth. And first of all, I want to say, you know, the core value statement for this program would be the end of Proverbs 31.10. And I chose the Amplified Version because it has the word worth in it. And it says her value is more precious than jewels and her worth is far more above rubies or pearls. You know, sometimes we, we tend to walk around with the stereotypes that people put on us. And we don't really understand our real worth. Mm -hmm. And we play the victim game, not that we aren't victims at some point in time. But I remember three years ago, they would have, I don't know if you remember this incident, where they had a three-way murder in Labrie, where the landlord killed, yes. he killed um, the woman, yeah. her husband, and then he killed himself. Yeah. And the PS at, at, at the ministry would have asked a, a group of us to go down to sensitize the area. So I would have visited the area in Labrie to speak to these women. And I I think I was the third or the fourth speaker after the MP. And I'm looking at the room was full, over 100 people. Yeah. And people were upset. People were angry. It was very tense I because myself. yeah this this thing happened and I had my, my my speech well prepared in my tablet you know and I'm getting ready to speak and then I just put my tablet down and I said you know what these are real people with a real issue and we need to get to the root of the problem so that we can provide a solution and I said to them forget what I've drafted here I want to talk to the women in the area who feel victimized who feel that they've lost it all who feel that this should not happen how many more must die. So I want to understand from you all, why do you think you are in the position that you're in? And I was speaking to people who would have been on the end of abuse, whether physical, mental, financial, spiritual, whatever type. And they were hesitant at first. And then one woman got up and she said to me, she said, ma'am, you know, it's been difficult for me to speak before, but I want to say that I have five children and he's the breadwinner. 
and I don't have anybody else. So whatever he dishes out, if I want my children to survive, I have to put up with it. And then another woman said a similar thing and people started talking and a woman said, well, she's been told that she, exp she, she grew up hearing that she would be abused eventually because her mother was abused and her grandmother was abused and all her aunts have been abused. So I recognized two things. One, there was an issue with financial intelligence and financial freedom because money answered all things. So sometimes your escape route needs some money. Sometimes, you know, the children education, the way out is the money. Yeah. But then one of the main things that hit me to the core was they didn't know their worth. Because not because it happened to your mom and it happened to your grandmother and it happened to whoever. You could break that cycle. That's generational. You don't have to hold on to what they've said. And too many times we as women hold on. So you've been divorced, you've been battered, you've been bruised. But you, how long are you going to stay battered and bruised? The situation has ended. He has walked away. You've been divorced. And I'm not saying it's easy. Because I've been divorced as well, and it hasn't been easy. But you have to know your worth, because I know who I am, and I know whose I am. And sometimes you need another voice. You need somebody else to say to you, hey, everything is going to be all right. Let, dust yourself up. There, there's hope at the end. You, sometimes you have to change your circle. Sometimes you have to change your friends. Sometimes you have to distance yourself from some family members who, who keep bringing you down and saying negative stuff. And, and you're not able to recognize your worth. Because we are, we are all who God says we are. And if we are made in his image and his likeness and, and we are here to fulfill purpose, you see, you have to understand why you're here in the first place. You're not just here because you happen to be here. You, nobody's an accident. You are here because you have purpose to fulfill. What is your purpose? When does your journey, you know, what part of your journey are you? Do you recognize your journey? What, what are you responding to? So I know coming, coming to, you know, a little bit in the program, I want to open the lines for us to talk to some people mm -hmm. to find out, you know, the labels that people are putting on you, how to get those labels off, how to renew your inner strength, how to become more empowered, edified, educated about your worth. And I, I want us to go to our first ad because it's from the Office of the PM, Ministry of Gender and Child Affairs. And then we're going to talk some more. Okay. So let's um, pay a bill. All right. <laughs> Did you know an emergency application for a protection order against a respondent can be made by telephone, video conference, or other appropriate electronic means? You matter. Your life matters. Don't suffer in silence. Help is available now. Call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 800-SAVE. That's 800-7283 or the TTPS at 999. This message brought to you by the Office of the Prime Minister, Gender and Child Affairs. Awesome. So one of the things I realized, and I want to thank the Office of the Prime Minister, Minister um, Gender and Child Affairs Division, for continuing to respond. Because people have been saying, you know, they've been crying out for things to change. They've been crying out for legislation. They've been crying out for information. And they've been making, you know, different calls as to how and when these things should take place. And I want to say thank you to the ministry for responding to the call. Because there are a lot of things that are actually taking place in the ministry that people aren't aware of. For example, changes in legislation, etc. And next week, Monday, which is International Women's Day, okay. we are going to have a subject matter expert and a special guest will be joining us next week okay, to great. talk about some things that the Office of the PM, Ministry of Gender, is, is doing. So one of the things I want to do, um, I want to, we're going to do this program so different. It ain't going to be the normal, normal program. So we can open the lines of and get some, can. it's 6223937. So Cameron, you, you're my new radio <laughs> brother. <laughs> so well, Cameron I'm Fisher. enjoying the program, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So we want to hear um, from some people. But I want to hear, before we open the phone lines, I want to sure. hear from you. How, how, how does a woman find finds her worth what mm -hmm. what are some of the steps to um you know i was just curious well firstly how did you find your worth how, right so i think that's it how did yeah. i find my worth one of the things um so let me see if i could go back to my divorce i i could talk about me see when you're naked and not ashamed that's when yeah. you know you're free yeah so when i realized that i i'm getting divorced this, this, this is happening whether you like it or not this so it is was happening. not your call um well, <laughs> technically, yes. But um, at the end of the day, 
When and then I'm a public figure too, so everybody's like, "Oh my God, Wendy got married. He's so handsome. They look so cute. The couple looks so nice. Every time they see us, you know, it's such a beautiful couple." Yeah. But nobody knew what was going on behind closed doors. Okay. And when I realized that, for me, I found my worth, which led me to my divorce. Okay. So this this is this is me. So in in the beginning of my marriage, um, my husband would have been unfaithful um, with a friend. So I have a former friend who now has a child for my ex-husband. So everybody would say, oh, my God, the friend should not have done this and your husband, da, 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 da. But then when you accept responsibility, so I did the blame game initially, I will admit. I did the blame game initially. And then one day, I this is me, I was in London and I, and I was going over everything that happened, this series of events. And I said, hang on a minute. You're a child of God. You, you you know God. It's not like you don't know God. You may have disconnected or you may have decided to do your own thing, mm-hmm. but you know God. And Matthew 6, 33 says, seek ye first kingdom. And you got married and you didn't even consult God. You didn't even care if this man was God's choice for you. You just went with what everybody said. It's time oh. to get married. You all look cute. And, and all this other crazy stuff. You were heading in one direction. You allowed this man to swing you back to London because I had left London. And we came to Trinidad for a couple months to go to Miami to live, actually, and then got engaged and went back to London. And my whole life changed because emotions and, 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 and a man. So when I realized what was happening, I said, you know what? It's time to stop blaming him. It's time to stop blaming her. And this is not something you are going to accept because I forgave once and I decided, you know what? How many times do you forgive? Now, I, I, I'm a kingdom citizen, but I ain't too sure about the 70 times 7 thing. So I decided, you know what? You have to face the music. You have to pull yourself up. You have to get it together. And I remember my mom saying to me, um, come home. And I said, Mommy, what am I coming home for? To face my in-laws and to face all the million and one questions? I, I, I don't want to come home. I don't want to see nobody on that side. I'm in London. I'm good. I'm going to go by my younger brother in New Jersey, and I'm going to spend Christmas there. And she was like, you sure? I said, yeah. So I told my brother I'm coming for Christmas. And I returned to London on all year's night. And I'm a reader. I'm an avid reader. And I know about sound. So I was reading Mike Murdoch at the time, and he was talking about the power of sound. Okay. So whenever I leave the house, I would leave sound in the house. And when I came back all year's night, it was just a shower change and head to church and Bishop T.D. Jakes was on TBN and he said I'm speaking to someone in London so I kind of like make a double check and I'm like look around. You, see, you understand what I'm saying <laughs> and he said you know sometimes when God is getting ready to bless you and get your attention he takes people out of your life and that stopped my tears there was no more crying and I realized you know what you made a mistake you went about things the wrong way. Forget him, forget her. They have their own questions to answer. So for me, in the middle of my separation into divorce is where I recognize my worth and I realize what I was not prepared to accept. And it's from there I shifted and I moved forward. So sometimes in the middle of your situation, God will use your situation to talk to you. Okay. He would use your circumstances to talk to you. And you are not your circumstance. I could still be broken and battered and all crying. And no, I don't have time for that. I ain't the first person to get divorced. I ain't going to be the last. <laughs> you know, you pick yourself up and yeah. you move on. Okay. 6223937. I'm in studio with Miss Wendy H. Lewis. You know, a skilled and thorough researcher, articulate, articulate communicator, all rounded. So. <laughs> If you'd like to be part of the discussion, um, six two two three nine three seven. And you know, whilst while while you were just tell me when we're ready to go to the lines and stuff, yeah. you know, one of the other things I would say is even if you don't have a situation that you can avoid it, just believe in you. How do you see yourself when you look in the mirror in the morning? Do you see what do you see? Do you see what people say, or do you see your real worth and your real value? You know, we say our gifts make room for us. And I think sometimes as women, we, we, we tend to be on the defense too much. We try to defend our circumstance. Okay. Good afternoon. Mm. Welcome. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Pleasant the day, I-95. Yes. Good afternoon. Welcome to A Woman's Worth. How are you? Fine, thank you. I have a question, but I want to say a special good afternoon to Minister Wendy and for taking up the call to fulfill her prophecy. Thank you so much. No problem. Moving on to the question. 
um, well, this program is to edify mm-hmm. women, right? Mm-hmm. So my question is how to restore your inner strength, right? Because many times a woman have been through emotional, physical, and financial abuse. Yes. So is there any steps, any advice to mm-hmm. restoring this inner strength that you speak about? Yes. The answer to that is, so first of all, is this, are you a believer? I am. Well, you are who God says you are is the first place to start. So sometimes a word puts us in a particular frame of mind and it's the same and, and then it's a word we need to take us out. So you get to the root cause of the issue. So if you're, for example, feeling depressed or you're feeling distressed, what caused the depression? What would have changed your mood? What would have taken place? What would you have heard? So then now you take another word and you say, you know what? I am who God says I am. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. So you take a word to compel another word. So you have to find that strength. And sometimes it may come, it has to come from you. Because sometimes, you know, as David said, sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Because sometimes we look for the encouragement and we look for the empowerment from sources that aren't equipped to fulfill us. And, and they end up putting a dampener on the situation. So you're feeling depressed and you're talking to someone who's 10 times more depressed than you. And they start the pity party. Well, girl, I've been there myself, you know. And girl, mm-hmm. we're in this thing together. And they start going down this whole pity party road. Sometimes you have to X people out and just right. find yourself within the word that you know. And as a believer, it becomes easier because you know the word. For people who aren't believers is where they would need, you know, sometimes maybe a crutch, sometimes a, a friend, sometimes a good friend. And, and we use the word friend loosely because they are friends and friends. So right. as a believer, you have from Genesis to Revelation at your advantage. Just remember the word. You can do all things through Christ who strengthened you. So that's where your strength that you're asking asking for will come from. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very calling. much, Minister, for your advice. Thank you so much for calling. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, I myself, I'm going to heed that advice as well. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful it, advice. Sometimes, sometimes, mm-hmm. sometimes we look to the wrong people and sometimes we need to do some sifting. You have to do some, I do sifting all the time. Sift your circle. Sift, sometimes I pick up my phone and I just start deleting people. Because you're serving no purpose. Sometimes you look at your phone and somebody call you and you you get to choose. Do I take this call? I there's something that I started doing a few years ago, Cameron. I don't I don't respond to anyone before I've spoken to God. Every single day. If my phone rings early in the morning and I haven't prayed as yet, you go wait till I finish talking to God because you could be somebody that's calling to try to trip off my day with whatever you're calling about, whatever your situation is. I can't drive without gas. So I need to go to the gas station first, fill up my tank, and then I could respond and drive and, and I could drive. I could drive all over the place where I need to go. So sometimes we, we, we need to make some choices and yeah. yeah, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Did you know that under the amended Domestic Violence Act, the court can grant an interim order or a protection order on the basis of a single act or omission or where a single threat has been made by the respondent? Every life counts. Do your part by contacting the police at 999 or the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 800-SAVE. That's 800-7283 to get help today. See it. Stop it. Report it. This message brought to you by the Office of the Prime Minister, Gender and Child Affairs. Okay, so we're just about nine minutes. Climb up to the top nine minutes before your... News update, it's a woman's worth, brand new program. Yes. Yeah. And I know I just listened to the ad from the office of the PM and they were talking about the increase in the penalty for the breach on protection orders. And I just want to go over mm-hmm. the, for the first conviction is $50,000 or one year imprisonment. For the second conviction is $150,000 fine or three years. And for your third conviction is $250,000 or even five years. And this is something that they've been people been advocating for to see stiffer penalties. Yeah. And it has happened. And I want to encourage people to call the domestic violence hotline 800 save call 999 you you have to make the call if you see it you can stop it 
by reporting it. And a lot of times we see people not just being physically abused. We know people who are being emotionally and mentally abused. And we sit on the sidelines and we say nothing and we do nothing. We ought to be our brother's keeper, in this case, sister's keeper. And we need to be able to, to be the shoulder because you never know where you will end up in life, where you would need someone. Everybody needs someone. No one is an island. No one is an island. So I know we head into the top of the hour and we have one more ad to go. We're going to take some more calls and we will okay. continue. And we have some callers. And good afternoon. Welcome. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Welcome good afternoon. Program. Good afternoon. Fantastic program. Thank you so much. You see, the problem with some of our women is that we always want to fight the battle by ourselves. Correct. And we can't do it. Mm-hmm. It's like me one day I was worrying so much, always worrying about the children. Mm-hmm. I have this to do in the house and I have that to do. And you know, one morning I got up and I was saying my prayers and after I finished, I look around and I heard the voice, a natural voice. Hmm. So why worry when you're not doing anything about it? Wow. And I turn around and say, my God, thank you. Because you know you wanted an answer and you don't know how the answer coming. Yes. So I just open my eyes and I say, thank you, Father. Yes. He right responds. Right is your answer. You have to start somewhere. That's right. So some fantastic program. Thank you and continue. This thank you so much, good Mom. Work. Bye-bye. Thank you. Six two two three nine three seven. You know, the last caller said something really interesting. And, and I realized as a, as, a, I'm a, as a woman of God, you know, when I open my mouth, kingdom will come out anyway, either way. And she said something very interesting about getting hearing the voice that inspired her to do something. Yeah. We talk about faith, but faith without works is dead. It, it's not going to drop on your lap. A change is not just going to miraculously come in your sleep and you're going to wake up and your entire environment changes. You have to actually do something. And before you do something, you have to accept responsibility as well. That's one of the things that we we, we don't do is accept responsibility because it's easier to blame. It's easier for me to, yeah. to, to bash my ex-husband. It's easy. I've forgiven him. We're good now. You know, he's moved on. I've moved on. We're good. It's easy for me to even bash my former friend. I mean, we're no longer friends because I have boundaries in my life. And, you know, you have to secure your space. Okay. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, you did what, what, what you felt you needed to do at the point in time. And what should I do? Stay upset with you for what? Decades? Yeah. No. Just move on. Just, you just got to move on. You know, forgiveness is not about the other person. Forgiveness is about me. Yeah. Forgiveness is about you. Forgiveness is about the individual. So we're taking your calls at 622-3937. Join the dialogue, A Woman's Worth, with my new brother, Cameron. Yes, and my new sister. (laughs) (laughs) You know, also, someone said to me, you know, what sense does it make making a call? That call could be the call that could change somebody's life. And sometimes when you make that call, that person will be placed in a very safe home, We have a lot of shelters. The office of the PM has recently opened two shelters last year and the year before. And they are equipped because when you go to these places and your situation is assessed, immediately rehabilitation begins. Immediately. And one of the things I recognize is we keep saying negative stuff about who we deem the perpetrator. Mm -hmm. But this is a woman's worth. One of these, not next Monday because it's International Women's Day, the following Monday, we're going to talk about a man's role in a woman's worth. A man's role? In a woman's worth. In a woman's worth. Mm -hmm. Okay, that that sounds interesting. Very much so. We're going to have some good times. So we have like um, four minutes left, and I was wondering, in Mm -hmm. light of what's going on with all these young women, you know, domestic violence, Mm -hmm. a lot of women missing and... yes. We have a lot of young girls um, running away mm-hmm. and some missing. What's your take on this? Let, let me deal with um, the missing bit first, then mm-hmm. I will deal with the runaway. Okay. So there's a girl's code. Mm-hmm. It's It's been blasted all over social media. Mm-hmm. When I was growing up, we had a girl's code. I'm grown and there is still a girl's code. We leave together, we return together. You ain't leaving no environment whether it's a party or not because I've had my party in days you in my days none of us could leave a fet and say you know what um, I'm going with John yeah. who, who John yeah. you going with John all eight of us going with John yeah. because it, we're not rolling like that when we get home I mean something as simple as 
I had a, a ministerial event on Friday evening. And by the time I got home, I messaged or called every single woman who was part of the entourage. Are you in safely? One was leaving early and she said to me, Minister, I'm leaving. That I said, when you get to your destination, message me or call me to let me know you've arrived safely. We're grown. I could have said, oh, Minister, I could get home. No. Yeah. There's a code. And sometimes we don't, I don't know if it's a cultural thing or if it's a parental thing, but there is a code. You have no right to be on the road at the night, midnight, you alone. And, and then some friends don't understand the friendship code. Your friend is your friend. No man is supposed to come between you and your friend. That ain't your husband. So you leave home with a girlfriend and some man whisper in your ears and you forget your girlfriend? Yeah, and you tell her I'm coming back. Um, we go link up tomorrow. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? And the next morning your girlfriend missing? And you sleeping comfortable? No, 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 no. And then the next thing you ask me about is about a lot of people who are running away. Yeah. You say running away. What are they running away from? That's what I'm wondering. What are they running away from? You see, we I, I am old school and I'll always be old school. And sometimes women who make children and men who contribute to the making of those children don't make them parents. It doesn't make you parents because we have children making children. So although you, you, you've gotten pregnant, whether deliberate, whatever, you need to recognize that although you have this child, you are not an adult. You do not have the experience. You, you can't dishonor your parents. You need to understand, listen, this has happened. I'm having this child, but I, I don't even know how to be a mom. Find those older heads. Find your mother, find your grandmother, find your aunt, find, find somebody. And you see this era that we're in, we have zero excuses. We have the internet at our disposal. You could Google parenting. What do I need to do? I'm a teenage mom. I'm lost. You could Google that. Yeah. And you'll be guided accordingly if you don't have anyone in your circle. Because some people really don't have people in their circle. But you can find information. You can research your way into your worth. You can find your inner strength. You can. But you just have to understand. And we have the tools. Just use it for the right reason. Whilst you're sitting down playing a game, switch. Yeah. Google something else. So my thing is, what we need to do is be more aware of our surroundings. We need to speak out more. We need to call in. We need to have that conversation. Teachers have a role to play. Parents have a role to play. The community has a role to play. It's not down to Commissioner Gary Griffith. It's not down to Honorable Ayanna Webster Roy. It's not down to Dr. Rowley. It's not down to the Honorable Kamala Prasad Bissessa. It is it's not down to all those people. We as individuals have a role to play. And it's time we stop the blame game and start playing our role. Because we have a social responsibility. Okay. So true. Um, well... We're out of time until next Monday, but uh -huh. um, it's been a pleasure. You know, I've learned a lot, you know, um, yeah, took heed of some powerful message, you, you know. Thank you called. so much. Um, one last question. Um, you're an author. Yes. Do you have any books? My first book is called Victory in the Valley, and I am launching that book for my birthday this year. This year? Yes. Okay. Okay. Actually, I have a few more books, but that book is that book is the highlight. Okay. So that, that's 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 my that's a deep journey. So until Monday, any food for thought? Food for thought. I mean, just know your worth. Know just your worth. know your worth. Know who you are. Yeah. You can find the page a woman's worth on Facebook. A woman's worth. Wendy H. Lewis. You can communicate with me there. As I was waiting for the launch of the program to start our our campaign. So every day we're gonna be posting empowering stuff, edifying stuff. We're even gonna do some Facebook lives, and. Stay tuned. And I also want to thank again all my sponsors, Office of the PM, Gender and Child Affairs Division, the Trinidad and Tobago Corporate Training Academy, Little Africa for all your African wear. Get to Little Africa. Yeah. I know that I saved yes. that ad for last, so you're going to hear <laughs> the ad. Get to Little Africa so that you can look cute. Highly recommended. I want to thank Bishop Dr. Dexter James. Next week, we're going to be talking about uh, another program that we're going to be working on as well. Mm -hmm. So I really want to say thank you to you and thank you to I95 for having me, for my mom, my Warriors Assembly family, and everyone who has been locked on. God bless you all and have a great afternoon. Have a great afternoon to you too.
Little Africa. Come check us for your quality African outfit and fabric. Get your African print and garments at affordable prices, authentic, original, and of high quality. At number 124 Montrose Main Road, Shagonas. For further information, call 264 6102. Little Africa for quality African outfits and fabric. Tune in every Monday at 1.30 p.m. for A Woman's Word. A Woman's Word. Hosted by Minister Wendy H. Lewis. Topics will include the rights of men and women, gender-based violence, entrepreneurship, financial literacy, personal development, and much more. A Woman's Word. Hosted by Minister Wendy H. Lewis. Every Monday at 1.30 p.m. right here on I-95.5 FM. A Woman's Word. This program is sponsored by the Office of the Prime Minister, Gender and Child Affairs Division, the Trinidad and Tobago Corporate Training Academy, Little Africa, and Dab Coins, digital currency of the future. Mm-hmm.